Hi, John Mifrano here with another video tutorial. This time we're going to take a look at the Vegas Pro ProType Titler. Uh, recently Sony did a, a promo where they showed some text cascading down the screen uh, lighting up. Let me, let me show you what it looks like. So you can see it's got text kind of flashing on the screen and, and leaving a trail of uh, options. These happen to be the transitions that are available in Sony Vegas Pro. And several people asked, you know, how, you know, how do they do that? And actually, it was just done with ProType Titler in all uh, in one event. You can see down here, there's just one event that's making all this happen. So let me show you how this is done. It's quite easy. I'm going to delete this, and we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to right-click on the video track and select Insert Generated Media, and then from the plugin chooser, I will select the Sony ProType Titler. Now, in ProType, if you've never used it before. Uh, it's a little bit confusing at first, but once you understand how it works, it's, it's not that bad. Um, the plus sign up here will allow you to add a new text block. And, and what I want to do is add the Sony Transitions, which I've cut and pasted into Notepad. So let me bring up Notepad. Uh, and I already know I've got uh, 23 transitions here. I want to put them in two rows, and they're going to end right at this 3D flyout. So I'm going to copy this with Control C, uh, then go to the Prototype Titler, click Add. This text is much too large. I already know that a, um, a size of 1 is closer to what I need. I'm going to do Control-V to paste, and you see there's my text in there. Uh, and then I will just click up here, or you can click Escape, and that will get you out of the uh, edit mode. Um, I will position this on the screen, and now you can see the beginning of, of our titles. I've got all of these in a row going down the screen. Now, when I select it, I'm selecting the whole block of text. I can click these little um, buttons on the side to toggle animation. When I do that, it will toggle animation on the entire block of text, but I don't want to do the entire block of text. I want to animate one line at a time. So critical to making this work is to go up here and navigate to child. When I click on navigate to child, what it does is it now goes to the first child, which is the line. The next child would be the word and the final child would be the character. So that's how you get to animate uh, characters, words, and lines. But I'm going to go out and navigate to uh, the line, and then I'll go over to my effects, and we'll use opacity for this one. So I'm just going to toggle on the animation for opacity. You see opacity has come down into the timeline here. I'm going to set the initial opacity to zero. We'll just drag this down. Then I'll move the timeline indicator a little bit forward and flash it up to 100. So that will be the bright flash. We'll go a little bit further uh, down the timeline, and then I'll make it uh, down to oh, about a 45 or, or so. So let's just type in 45 here. OK. Now if we play this, we see we've got just that one animation uh, playing up there. The key to making this work with all the other ones is to toggle Cascade. So if we look at this button here, it says uh, Toggle Cascade. And when I press this, you notice they all disappear and it's going to cascade the animation that I created on the first line to all the other lines. So now let's watch it. There it goes. You see, all right, Toggling down, but happening way, way, way too fast. So I'm going to click on the cascade properties, and I'm going to slow them down to about 50%. And we'll just type a 50 in here. And now let's watch it. There we go. Now they're happening much slower. But notice something very subtle. They're happening faster at the beginning, slower in the middle, and then faster at the end. And I don't want that. I want them to be steady all the way across. So again, uh, in these cascade properties, you'll notice that there's a curve here. And that curve is not linear. That curve is starting out fast, slowing down, and then ending up um, fast. So what I want to do is right click on the first one and say linear. I want that. Oh, it didn't happen. Right click here and click Linear. And now you see that curve straighten right out. Now when I play these, they're pretty much linear all the way across. Each one of them is, is taking the same amount of time. So that's how we got the first row in there. Very simple. Now, I could do the same thing for the next row, but there's a much easier way to do that. Here's a Save button. Save to Collection. So what I want to do, and I, I believe I already have uh, one of these in the collection. I'm just going to uh, delete it. What I want to do is click Save to Collection, and it opens up the collections and gives me the ability to save this under a name. I'm going to call it Flash Down. And that's it. It's saved. You can see it's doing a little preview here. 
um, of what that flash down looks like. So now that I've got it saved in the collection, anytime I wanna use this, I can open the collection, I can drag it down to the timeline, and there I have it again, the flash down again. Let me close these collections. So I've got the second flash down. I wanna click on that and move it over because I want the next set of lines to start over here. I also want them to start when the first set ends. So I'm gonna move the cursor and see where we get to the end here. Uh, just here's where the 3D flyout happens. And when that happens, I want the next one to start cascading. So what I can do is just swipe the timeline here to highlight these and then drag them out where I need them. Now you notice the first keyframe is not dragging. So I'm gonna double click on the timeline to add a new keyframe and then move that out. And you'll notice that is going below because that one is not linear either. Uh, so I'm going to click on it on this keyframe and say linear. I'm sorry that went off the, the screen, but uh, and now let's go back out and make sure that I'm where I want to be. So the 3D flyout is right here. I want to move that one back here and start this here. And now if I watch this, they should come down and when it gets to the end, it'll start the next one. Great. Now all that's left to do is to put the right um, text in here. So let me go back to my notepad. Let me take from 3D Shuffle on down. I'm going to do a Control C to copy it and close that. And then I'm going to go back over all of these and do a paste. So now I've got the new ones in there. Uh, and now it should happen. I just want to watch my timing here. This one uh, this one comes out, I think that one's a little bit too soon. So I think I want to move this over. And right about there. And, and on this keyframe, I definitely want to make this, I think uh, we use 45, just so they're accurate. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Let's uh, close this, and let's look at what we have. And there they are, scrolling down the screen one after the other. So there you have it. Very easy in, in ProType Titler. Again, the secret here is to navigate to child to make sure that whenever you're animating parameters, you're animating uh, the block or the child or the word um, or the letter. Uh, and, then in, in, uh, and then toggling cascade so that it cascades to the uh, other children. And of course, uh, making sure the cascade settings are, are set up correctly. So there you have it. Until next time, this is John Refrano. Thanks for watching.